Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I would like to share a story with you, um, which we started three and a half years ago. Um, before I joined the city, I actually worked for different NGOs and businesses and traveled the world. And um, building a living life in Bratislava was such a good challenge that I decided to uh, join our new mayor. Um, and why we actually wanted to do this uh, is because innovation in the city was very um, distributed among different departments. There was no one strategy and we actually didn't know what are we trying to solve, what problems the city is facing. Uh, we didn't have data in one place. Uh, there was no consistent data policy, which we have right now already. Um, we also um, didn't map the needs of our residents, so we were missing the why. Why are we? Why should? Why we should engage innovation in general for the city? Because it's very broad term and it means different things for, for different people. And for us, it took us uh, nearly two years to actually uh, analyze the needs of the city, the needs of the residents, and also kind of map the the basic data. But for that, you need to have a different skill set because being a public servant, you usually follow the rules and we are there to break them. Uh, we are there to, to go and ask, so why couldn't we do this? Uh, is there a law that is forbidding us to do this? Or is this just the way it's been done always? But it's just not working, but we don't care. Um, I'm not saying that my colleagues don't care, they do uh, very deeply, but um, we needed to allow them a safe space to actually play and explore different options to find ways to uh, find solutions for the challenges we're facing. And in past three years, we had plenty of challenges to face, which we didn't expect. Um, and we were also, uh, and I, we heard it uh, a lot today um, about cooperation and, and the city hall was very siloed and we started to cooperate across departments because these challenges we can't solve alone. So, um, what we started with was creating value for the residents and stakeholders and mapping out where the city is. Uh, we've decided to tie our strategies and, and what we're doing with SDGs. So uh, we partnered with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission to actually map out where the city is with all the 17 goals. So we have kind of um, the baseline for where Bratislava is and where we need to go if we want to reach um, um, our SDGs by 2030. We also have another challenge in the past two weeks we've uh, received information that we are one of the hundred cities that needs to become or wants to become climate neutral and smart by 2030 so that's going to be a challenge as well. But right now um, we started to build tools and competencies in the city and across our partners to actually be able to do that. So uh, to show you some examples, uh, this was one of the first projects we've actually tackled. This is one of the main streets in, in the city of Bratislava. Um, it's called the Shopping Street. Um, it uh, hasn't changed in a long time. And uh, when we were looking at the definition of the why, what are the problems we think we are facing, we as a city thought that um, this street was untidy and we didn't take care of it properly. But when we uh, went outside of the city hall and we actually started to talk to people, we engaged them on the streets, we observed them, how they behaved. And it wasn't that the street was unclean or um, that it was like some of the management problems we were observing with cleaning services, but it was more about, we would love to have a chair here or we would like to build um, a small pocket garden in here or we would like to have a green wall on uh, there is a this long wall there they would like to have a green wall in there so uh, we had to reframe the problem or the way we are looking at uh, the city we are trying to govern so uh, the problem we were trying to solve was uh, instead giving people tools um, to be active in uh, improving their own city and we as a city have a great tools great many tools to actually allow people to do that uh, so we went through a process of, of design thinking. So uh, since we had a problem, uh, we engaged our residents uh, to tell us what they would like to do with that problem. So we did lots of brainstorming sessions and workshops. Um, you can see lots of post-it notes on the, on the wall where we uh, gathered lots of data. We had to analyze the data, cluster it, and um, use democracy for uh, our needs. So we've uh, actually went outside before Corona 
and we ask people, uh, tell us what would you like to do outside? So um, we've uh, gave them little cards where they could play with us and tell us what are your top five solutions that you want to see within the city? And we will try to create tools to do this. Out of this process, we've actually managed to uh, build a crowdfunding campaign to plant trees within the city and allow people to actually come and plant trees with us. Um, and uh, we've started with five euros per tree. Um, and so anyone could actually donate and be part of beautifying the city. Also, uh, one of the key things people were missing were community gardens. So they wanted to have community gardens across in their neighborhoods. And for us, since we and, uh, um, own a lot of land uh, across the city, we've actually identified pieces of land that um, could be could, that could serve as a community garden to uh, speed that process up. And as you can hear, these are not really technological solutions. They are more kind of uh, engagement of people, but technology is a great tool because that allowed us to uh, bring people closer to these solutions because we've built websites around this and, and also crowdfunding campaigns. So uh, we went outside and we tested with, with lots of people. Um, and then uh, there are other things I would like to share with you because this session is about living labs. So we thought, okay, so if we can do this with people, we would also like to do this with universities and, and businesses. Because as, as the city, we have lots of challenges and we don't have all the answers. So we wanted to create a safe space where we can do um, experiments uh, with either university research teams or startups, scale-ups. And these are the topics we've identified as the largest challenges for the city. So um, as you probably all know, uh, it's a little bit harder to run through the, all the administration, but we've managed to find a ways with the, the Y um, kind of approach. And uh, we've decided to run pilots uh, and put um, air quality sensors across the city to actually get the data on air quality. Um, and also uh, we've uh, wanted to engage uh, teams in more uh, digital solutions. So for three years, we've been running a citywide climathon. Um, it's an event that we run with our partners. Everyone's invited. We had, um, first one was fully virtual. The, the other ones were kind of hybrid. And we had uh, people coming from uh, 10 different countries, also research groups, that they wanted to solve the challenges we posted in front of them. From the first... Um, Climathon, we actually developed our uh, multimodal um, applic mobility application, so mobility as a service application based on open source, because as a city we also decided to build all our software on open source, uh, so we can share it with, with other cities. And this was a, a team of students um, that wanted to improve um, or predict how public transport will be late. And out of that, we've actually scoped it out into a larger project that we could do together. Uh, last year, we actually worked with a team that is helping us out map um, climate vulnerab vulnerabilities in urban planning. So we are trying to open up the city and allow other departments and find frameworks for them to work with these type of teams and, and try to find um, funding for it. So. This was something we've managed to do uh, within three years, but um, there are lots of different challenges in front of us. And we know that to be more successful, we need to uh, cooperate a little more. So we, we've decided to build a public-private partnership, so uh, build a network of partners that are uh, active within the city. We will start with the coalition of the willing. So the universities, community universities, one of them, um, and Slovak Technical University is the other that will be working closely with us on uh, actually creating um, an organization that will allow to solve the challenges cities facing. And we've decided um, to build together um, an innovative district. Um, it's the area uh, that's already looking into uh, being redesigned. Uh, there is a headquarters being built by our very famous antivirus company, ESET. <laughs> uh, they are here as well if you want to talk to them. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so we're using the opportunity as the neutral player because we see cities as neutral players allowing this to happen um, 
when I talk to other cities, one of the most tools, uh, the most powerful tools the cities have is the zoning plan. So that's the way we can shape and improve uh, the way the city is growing. And we would like to work with our partners closely into creating this um, innovation district that could look like this. Uh, these are the visualization of the ESA new headquarters. So very, we are very much looking into energy neutrality. Uh, there are research institutions in there. There is also a Bratislava Zoo in there. It's um, one of kind of the city um, center areas, but it's a little bit not popular among people. So uh, we also want to orchestrate the places in between. And why are we trying to do that is um, when we've looked at data over these past two years, <coughs> excuse me, um, we've realized that um, SMEs that are based in Bratislava have low innovativeness, which means they usually take innovative solutions for abro from abroad or they're just not innovating enough. And we've also had a decrease in number of students over the past 10 years, which is not a good sign if you have a booming economy and lots of companies and you want to kind of sustain that growth. Also, Bratislava, which I probably didn't mention, is a, is a big university city. We have around 55,000 researchers and students and in uh, our city, so it's a, it's a large population. And when we where we want to be in 2030 is we want to... <clears throat> make the city really attractive for talent because now they can choose any city. Uppsala is a beautiful city and if I would be choosing it, then I would be very happy because it's green, it's, um, it's nice to live in. So we want to be also attractive for students from Slovakia, but other places as well. And also looking at energy, that's, that's one of our goals as well. But how we can do that? Because um, in Slovakia, <clears throat> The um, things are a little bit different. We need to build trust. There was no deeper connection between the players before, so we need to <clears throat> make consistent small actions to build trust. So that's what we tried to do over the past three years, and that's what we need to continue to do in the future. And I want to leave you with this question, because many of you have done it before. So how would you do it, and what are your tips? Thank you so much. <laughs>